Hey guys, it's No Pro Jim here. I'm glad to finally be back giving you guys some more content. I know it's been a while, but I'm pretty stoked on this. Today, I'm super excited. We're gonna be unboxing the Snapmaker. Those of you that don't know what this is, the Snapmaker is a three-in-one 3D printer, laser cutter, and CNC operator. You're gonna, well, I'll be the operator. But I'm super stoked on this machine. The potential for creative production is unlimited. I'm super stoked, can't wait to get this thing set up. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be unboxing it, we're gonna be going through the pieces, we're gonna be putting it together. Today in this video, we'll just be doing the 3D printing side of it. And then down the road, I'll go ahead and uh, do another video on the laser cutter and the CNC setup as well. Let's get started. All right, so getting out here, we want to be careful with cutting this open. This is a pretty expensive piece of machinery. The last thing I want to do is scratch the shit out of it or slice some cables or anything. So let's go ahead and get inside this box, see what it looks like in here. Mm -hmm. So far, we have a box inside a box. Go ahead and see what's inside the second box. It's kind of a good thing that it's a box inside of a box because I was waiting for this thing to get delivered yesterday. And I kid you not, man, it's right before I heard the doorbell ring, I knew it was here because I heard the motherfucker. <laughs> because I heard the individual delivering it drop the shit from about four feet. <laughs> it's a heavy box. It's supposed to be team lift. Um, but, you know. Maybe, maybe they were short-handed, so dude, lost grip. There's two tabs that say take this out first. Well, that doesn't make much sense. There's two tabs that say take out first. I got an idea. We'll do both at one time. In case you thought I was kidding, we have this nice little quick start guide. All right, we got a bunch of boxes. Once we get through this, it looks like everything's gonna be protected. We got the power module, touch screen and controller. That's pretty nice. Cool. Tools and accessories. Right here we have the different tool heads. So here we have the tool heads. We have the 3D printer, we have the laser cutter, and the CNC. Nice. Came with some 3D printing filament. Cables, adapters, and brackets. work platform. Last thing on here, this must be the plate. I get this the fuck out of there. Before we start busting these boxes open, taking everything out and blindly trying to assemble it, Let's go ahead and take a look at this quick start manual, see if we can get an idea of what we're about to be up to. Looks like we're going to be starting by putting some feet on the tray and then attaching some of the Molino modules. Let's get to it. Yeah, baby. This is what we're looking for right here, guys. Go ahead and put this face down where we have all the holes and the grooves facing up. Next, we've got to find the feet. Found these feet. They were actually inside the toolbox that we had gone through. No big deal, we found them. Uh, we take the, the thicker end that's gonna be pressed against the plate and the tinier ends are gonna be up. And we're gonna put them in the four corners. And then we're gonna screw them in, fasten them, make sure they're nice and tight. And we're gonna flip this bad boy over. A lot of screws to use when setting it up and putting the plate in. And I heard that it takes a little bit of time when you're, you're transitioning from 3D printers, CNC, and others. I think there's a ghost in here. <laughs> Back to business. Flip this back. 
bad boy over. Just to let you know, as you're pulling these out, but you do not want to press on this steel strip right here. Right here, these are called sliders, and they want these positioned about halfway, the same distance, halfway down this thing. So I'm gonna place them right next to each other as so. Now I'll take this one and slide it down to about there. We're gonna pull out this platform. Attach the Y-axis to the platform. This is not to fasten these in all the way. So just kind of put them in there, get them threaded a little bit and see what the instructions say in a second. Take this, switch locations, put these down back over here. I'm checking right now to make sure that I have the holes lined up with the right holes. It actually kind of seats, it actually kind of sits right on there. Same screws that we used on the other ones, we're gonna go ahead and use to fasten this into place. So let's go ahead, kind of just drop them into place. Once we get them all kind of dropped into place, we'll go back and tighten them all up. Now step five is to come into these holes and go to the same screws we already put in. So this crevice right here is allowing me to kind of see what's going on over here. We're just about done. Here you're going to want to refer to page 19 in the quick start guide. Uh, we're going to need eight of the M4 by eight screws. And we're going to be using those screws to screw them in and attach the Z-axis holders. Um, you'll see that's what I'm doing right now. Next step, I'm going to turn this around. We're going to need two M4 by 8 screws. We're going to be attaching the touchscreen holder. Uh, touchscreen holder is magnetic. It's actually a pretty solid piece. Next, we'll be attaching two linear modules. Uh, we'll need 12 4x8 screws. Uh, we'll be threading the connection cables through the holes of the holders and then attach the Z-axis to the access holders. Make sure not to tighten the screws. Next, we're getting under the base plate so we could use eight M4 by eight screws and screw them into the bottom of the A-axis linear modules while also tucking away and cleaning up some of these wires. You'll also want to locate the Y conversion cable and the attached cable that's on both the Y axis and you'll want to take them, thread them through and connect them to the converter as shown in the manual. Right here you can see I've already attached the Y axis converter to the base plate and now we're going to screw in and attach the Z axis Screw this in with the same screws about five down one, two, three, four, five. X axis, Y is the next one. Let me get a Z. Yep. Z. So if you have them dangling around, just twist them and make sure they fit on there nice and flush. Nice and neat, that way when dust accumulates, it's easier to clean up. All right guys, next is the control panel. Pretty nice little touch screen. Uh, let's go ahead and plug it in. And there it is, SnapMaker power module. Overall, uh, putting the SnapMaker together has been fairly easy. Everything's been basic. 
as far as uh, positioning screws, screwing them in. As long as you follow the directions, you should be able to slap this, snap this thing together in no time. All right, fairly basic. We're going to take these core, plug it into the power module, and then plug it into the snap maker itself. They're both identical ends, so it doesn't really matter which one you plug in where. We'll go ahead and take in one end, come right over here, right above where we have the control panel plugged in, flip this around, take the power cord, plug it in right here to the three prongs. It's nice and snug. I'm going to be running it through an extension cord, but you got the three prongs right here. When we're ready to turn the power on, we'll come right down here. Boom, switch. We have the different modules for the different capabilities. Right here we have the 3D printing, we have the CNC, and we have the laser. So we'll be taking this one right here. We're going to go ahead and take the plugs that are offset like that. Plug right into the top right there. Alright guys, so here it is. Here's the base plate for the 3D printing. We're going to go ahead and be attaching this down to the base plate right here. Let's get it. So this is actually magnetized, so we're going to go ahead and take this off carefully. And we'll see that there's a bunch of places for screws. You do not want to print directly on this. All I got to do is start dropping them screws in there and we'll be all right. Go ahead and drop all these in at once. That way I could just go in with the screwdriver on one fluid motion. After we get this last screw tightened on, we're going to go ahead and take that magnetic plate and put it back on here. That's what you'll actually do the 3D printing on. You do not want to do it on this. Here we have this. This is going to come over and around and plug right above the power source. Go ahead and take this one and plug it in right here. Perfect. I like that glass. Get in there. Over here to the power. It's alive. Hello, let's make something wonderful. Let's start now. Hold on, I gotta read this shit. They're trying to buy my soul real quick. By using this product, you agree to be bound by these terms. If you disagree with any part of the terms, then you may not use this product. Well, I just built it. And it's in my possession. How are you gonna tell me I can't use it? All right, hold on, let's go back to the terms. We reserve the right at our sole discretion to modify or replace these terms by any time. That's some shady shit. All right, anyways. Y'all some spies, man. Why y'all worried about what it is I'm making? Hmm? All right, Snapmaker Touchscreen apps uses and collects data for the various purposes to provide and maintain our services. We develop to notify you about changes of our services. Understandable security. We use certain type of physical, organizational, and technical safeguards that are designed to improve the integrity and security of information that we collect and maintain. Please be aware that no security measures are perfect or impenetrable, and thus we cannot and do not guarantee that your information will not be accessed, viewed, disclosed, altered, or destroyed by breach of any of our physical, technical, and organizational safeguards. What the hell am I signing? <laughs> changes to this policy. Changes to this privacy policy. We may update our privacy policy from time to time. We will notify you of any changes. To by posting a new privacy policy on this page. Contact us if you have any questions about this privacy policy. Please contact us by email support and snapmaker.com. Disclaimer, that's all good. Please read and understand the contents of the manual of this product carefully. Failure to read the manual may lead to personal injury, inferior results, or damage to the Snapmaker product. Always make sure that anyone who uses the product knows and understands the contents of the manual to make the most of it. The conditions and methods used for assembling, handling, storage, use, or disposal of this product are beyond our control. For this reason, we do not assume responsibility or expressly disclaim liability for loss, injury, damage, or expense arising out of or in connection with assembly, handling, storage, use, or disposal of this product. I have read and I agree to the Snapmaker privacy policy terms and conditions and disclaimer. 
because you want to calibrate the machine. Initially, when I was calibrating the machine after setting it up, this access point wouldn't go up or down. I started to panic, but really all I had to do was turn off the machine, turn it back on, and recalibrate, and everything went right. You're going to want to use this calibration card at the end when it asks you to. Right now, it's going to go around and it's going to make all its stops. You can see we're right here, next stop, then here, and we're going to work our way all the way back to the center. Now for the manual calibrate, we're going to take this snap maker piece of paper we're going to go ahead and slide it right under here to the nozzle as we're adjusting it we're going to want to keep trying to move this back and forth and we're looking for it to catch just a little bit keep pressing down until you feel it catch it oh and then you want it to be able to slide just like that any more and it'll fold like that you do not want it to do that so go ahead back it up make sure that you still have the slide all right, guys, that's it right there. So we'll go ahead, pull this out. We'll come back over here to the control station and we'll hit save. And now it's ready to go. At this point, you can use a USB flash drive right over here with the files on it. All right, next you're gonna to wanna to head over to snapmaker.com, go to the product, Snapmaker 2, and then head to the download station in which you're gonna pick the appropriate download for your place. Once you click it and once you download it, you'll end up with a window that pops up like this. You'll go ahead and say yes. And once you install the software, you can go ahead and open up the Snapmaker Lubin And you'll see a window like this. You'll, what you'll want to do is you'll want to add. You click on the YZX. And that YZX will take you over here in which you can do connections. Make sure you're on Wi-Fi if you're trying to connect it. Come back over here to your control tablet slide to the left you can come down here to settings hit wi-fi it'll give you your wi-fi information go ahead and type that in right here hit connect you'll see this screen authorization needed you come back over to your control tablet you hit yes and that quick you're already connected at that time, it'll send you a home reminder telling you that the machine's gonna reposition to its starting position. Just say okay. Machine will move back to its starting position. It's a good thing this happened. You wanna go ahead and make sure that this stays rolled up. And that's the starting position right there. So head back to your computer. You're already connected. At this point, you could head down to the little cube. And this is your workstation right here. Let's go ahead and zoom into this. This looks a little small, so what I'm going to do is go over here to scale. And I'm just going to make it just a tad bit bigger. There we go. That looks good. Once you resize it, don't worry about it looking like it's not level. It'll pop back up to where the level is of the plate. And now you want to come over to the right, scroll down. Now you want to generate the G-code, which is this slicing down here in the progress. This is letting you know its path. It's kind of mapping out the directions that it needs to go. At this point, we're going to go ahead and load the G-code to the workspace. 
now it's going to take this back he's showing you it's only going to be a small portion all right so we already have it loaded we already are connected all right now that we have the g-code loaded to the workspace we can go verify that we're connected and since we're connected we can come over here and send to the device via wi-fi sending file has been sent successfully over here you'll see a little loading thing it loaded pretty fast faster than I could show you now do you want to start the job you say yes it'll go ahead it'll show you the specs making sure that you want to follow through with those settings if you want to adjust them just the settings if you're ready to go ahead and start the print then just hit start at that point the machine's going to start to warm up and reposition itself So while it repositions itself and the 3D printing header comes down, it's going to take a moment to warm up. We'll come over here, we'll see that the nozzle temp and the heated bed temp are warming up and trying to reach their goal temperature. As soon as they reach their goal temperature of 205 Celsius and 70 Celsius, this nozzle right over here on the header will push out a little bit of filament and then at which point it'll catch on the side of this when it starts moving and it'll be ready to print. As soon as the nozzle and the heat bed reach their goal temperature, you'll see that it spits out extra filament, and which then it does scrape and wipes it right off. And it will be clean for your print to start once it goes center. All right, guys, it's not too bad. Oh, hold on, let's help you guys out. I got a lot of cleanup to do. But this is a little pendant that I made. Not too bad. Uh, let's try to clean these up, make them actually look like skulls, and make her not look like melted wax. All right, we're going to go ahead and try to clean her up. After cleaning it up, guys, this is what we have. About a half dollar size medallion, put it out of filament. There's some rough edges around it. I went ahead and cleaned them up with a wire brush, a bristle brush, and uh, sanded paper, as well as a file, and an exacto knife. I think the larger the print, the better the detail will be. I'm gonna go ahead and paint this, uh, see how dressed up and nice we can get this to look. And then from there, we'll see how we feel about it. Well, here it is. Doesn't look too bad now that we dressed it up, threw some paint on it. Nice clear coat to protect it. Uh, I still didn't quite get the detail that I wanted out of it. Uh, so I said I went ahead and done another print and this one turned out a whole lot better. Check this out. Whoa, wait a second. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, that like button, and hit that bell for notifications. If you enjoyed this video, we got three more coming up. That's for laser cutting, the CNC, and also the own video for the enclosure build and how the setup looks in the end. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to do those things I just said so you don't miss the next one. Thanks, guys.